Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. So in this video, I'm going to be doing something that I always love doing, which is contributing to open source. So stick around and by the end of this video, I'll have contributed two things to the Turbo iOS framework. And that's what makes you have to sign in. Oh, actually, I just noticed something weird. Look, when you press done, it actually still shows like an empty screen. I said, hold up, wait a minute. Something ain't right. That might be something we want to fix. Let's see if we can fix this right now. Let's see, we're doing navigation controller route this, but then it would pop up a modal. So I want to see what we could do about that. Let's go to navigation, turbo navigation controller, and let's find that route method. See, route does dismiss any modals when receiving a new navigation. This is modal method, which is just checking based on the property. It looks like we're creating a new view controller, and then we're navigating to view controller, which is navigate should be a method too down here to view controller. So if it's a modal, then we're going to present that modal. If it's action replace, then we're going to, ah, uh, we're going to add the view controller to the view controllers, but deleting the last one. That's pretty simple. And if it's not a replace, then it's just going to add it to the stack, which would add that back button too. Now, my question is, look, with that done, when you go and intercept, it pops up a mode out. But what if the guy just like swipes off and then he's like, wait, where am I? Why am I on this empty page? What? Now I'm guessing it's because they added, look, there even has a back button, which means they created a view controller for the request, but then they just added a mode out on top of that page, even though nothing was loaded here. It says dismiss any modals when receiving a new navigation, if presented view controller not equal nil. But this isn't happening for me at least. So let's try to print this out at least. Presented view controller. And we're gonna try to print that out. So we're gonna have to restart. Okay, and then when I click this again, I wanna see, do we get that log? It's so hard to see too. Presented view controller is nil, but I'm guessing the presented view controller was supposed to be the one in behind it. Oh no, presented view controller has to be the modal. What am I saying? Because it says dismiss any modals when receiving a new navigation. Special case of navigating home, issue a reload. View controller. What if I just put that at the top? Weirdly enough, I'm just gonna try it. <clears throat> I don't know what pop view controller does. Probably a method. Intercept. I mean, I didn't see anything new. Oh, it did work. Look, <gasps> look at that. But let's, I don't think it's going <laughs> to see if I click anywhere else. That's not a mode out. I don't think it'll because if we pop the view controller, it basically means we're just getting rid of it. So that's probably not a good option. But what about the case where there's a mode out? Just check is mode out. If is mode out. Oh, actually, I'm trying to do JavaScript right now. So you have to say this and then we have to use brackets, but no parentheses. So if it's a modal, I'm going to pop the view controller. All right. So now when we intercept unauthorized access, uh, you'll see it does kind of do it for, it adds the view controller for a second, but then it like deletes it and goes back. Let's try to see if this still works. Indigo tech. I mean, it still worked for me. So let's try to see any more examples. Navigate. I mean, hey, it looks like everything's kind of working correctly. So we might have just solved an issue there. Oh, this is another one, right? Oh, if you weren't signed in, the server would have returned a 401 unauthorized response. Ah, okay. Load a web page modally. Submit form. Interesting. All right, intercept with a native view. So I think we all understand how the load a web page mode. Uh, what if I can comment this out and then see if that is different, if it would have had that same error with the empty page. Also, maybe we should just pop the view controller uh, when we're doing like the prompt for authentication method. I think that'd be a good idea. All right, let's try this again. Load a web page modally. We click and if we look, no, the background's still fine. But if we go back to this intercept unauthorized demo, whoa. 
Oh, we're gonna have to sign out first. We sign out and then we click this again. Look, it has like an empty view controller behind. That's so weird. But we fixed it by popping the view controller. So what I was saying is it might be a better idea to do the popping in that prompt method. So I have to find where it is again. Was it not in this page? This is the navigation controller. Let's go back to scene controller. And right in here, let's try to do the same like pop view controller method. I don't know if we have access to it. I really don't know because we're in all the way in a different class. Might have no idea, but let's try. We never know if we don't try. Oh yeah, it literally says cannot find pop view controller in scope. Okay. Oh, we can do it off the navigation controller though. Navigation controller dot pop view controller. Just like that. And I think that will fix that issue. Let's try it. So if we do the intercept, what happens? Well, we don't have that empty view controller. That's awesome. So you know what? I kind of want to make a pull request just for this one line of code. But I think if we're going to make a PR, we have to fork. So let's do that real quick. This is going to be awesome. Stop tasks. So I'll open up the GitHub again. Whoops. Turbo iOS. We're going to fork it. Oh, I already have a fork. Although, don't you have to like update it? Let's see, Turbo iOS. Oh no, I wanna find my own Turbo iOS. Right here. I'm gonna click sync fork because it does say it's out of date. So I'm just gonna update branch. Just like that. And I'll take this and I'll clone this fork down. We already have Turbo iOS, so okay, that's fine. <clears throat> now I'm going to go inside of here and make those changes. Just that one change. So we'll go to Xcode. Open existing project. We're going to have to find uh, that link, which should be in the main. Yep, right here. Open up the demo project. If I can go right into here into the demo folder, go over to the scene controller. And then we just have to find that prompt for authentication right here. And we're going to say navigation controller, pop view controller, animated false. Just like that. Save it. And then I will Go back in here. Let's CD into Turbo iOS. It would get status to see if it saw about the new changes. Looks like it did, so right here. Uh, demo scene controller.swift. Let's do a git diff. So you'll see that there was only, the only difference was adding this one line. So we can add that file. Then I'll do a commit message. I'll say, Pop view controller. How about remove empty view controller when uh, intercepting unauthorized requests. All right. Now we'll do a git push. Which actually, maybe I should have put it in a in a branch. I don't know if that's important. Let's reload our fork. It says this branch is one commit ahead of Turbo iOS main. So then I'll click contribute, which will have as the option to open pull request. And then I'm just going to click create pull request. For this avoids having an empty view controller behind the modal when intercepting. authorized requests and then I do want to just share a quick video just so that they understand what I'm talking about so they don't think I'm completely crazy although they don't because I've already contributed before and they're pretty nice people and I I encourage all of you guys who are watching 
to go and contribute to open source right now. Make that the goal for the night. Make that the goal for the weekend. Go contribute to open source because this is open source is like the glue that holds everything together in the programming world. It's important just to add things like this. Okay, so I just went and recorded a little demo for them just so that they can see well, whoever's reviewing this, which I bet it's Joe Maslotti because he's like the only guy who's actually doing the reviews. Although hopefully I will become a new, a uh, new like maintainer once I start adding a bunch of pull requests and stuff to the framework. Cause I love Turbo iOS. I love building apps and I'm just going to keep making more from here. All right. So now I need to grab that. We'll go to my recording folder. So right here should be the one that I recorded. See, I just showed them how, what was not working. So I'm just going to drag this over here. Wait for it to upload. There we go. And I'm just going to create pull request. Remove empty view controller when intercepting unauthorized requests. Well, this is for the demo. I guess I should add that in for demo app. Sweet. So just like that, we've contributed to open source. You check out some of the other pull requests real quick. Several improvements by Oliver Resif. Okay. This PR contains three changes for my convenience, but I'm happy to break them into three separate PRs if needed. So Turbo Navigator Root View Controller allowed us to access the main nav controller. I've added Modal Root View Controller so we can access that too. I've added an animated key to visit proposal. This is the first step towards allowing native clients to use custom animations. Will Turbo Navigator handles hierarchy? Cool. Finally, when routing, I've added an options parameter. This is useful when you want to override the options given from the path config dynamically. And Joe Maslati said, thanks for this. I made one code style suggestion and one API suggestion. Let me know what you think. Otherwise, this looks good to me. So animated would be a bool. If animated equals parameters animated, return animated. Otherwise, just return true. Okay. Oh, he suggested this change, a one-liner. Cool. So he's just like suggesting a little bit of syntax changes. Cool, cool, cool. Joe Mazzalotti's pretty good because I just saw the other pull request and he just answered that. So he gets to it pretty quick. Let's do the file changes. So he allows the proposal to change the animation status when pushing, popping, or presenting. Cool. Present alert via proposal. Confused. Oh, look, it looks like it was always true. Because if you want to override the configuration at a certain point, which I guess that might, we might get to that. I haven't really made like too many apps where I needed this. And also he wants the root view controller and the modal root view controller. I mean, yeah, that's probably like a little small edge case that he encountered in his app. That's interesting. Allow a nav controller to be pushed into a modal stack. I found this scenario we haven't considered with Turbo Navigator. There are times when pushing or placing the modal controller with the navigation controller is expected. For example, presenting in this so the user can add a new event to their calendar is currently not possible because this controller inherits from UI navigation controller. Really? With the current implementation, Turbo Navigator crashes when trying to push one of these view controllers on a modal stack because it's disallowed. So let's see, what is he talking about? He even included a link to this eKey event edit, a view controller for creating, editing, and deleting calendar events. Cool, so it already has all of that built in? That's insane. Think about it, if you were building an app for like doctors or anything really that you had events, like that could be any type of app. Look at how easy it is. That's pretty cool. And then someone else actually reviewed it. Cool. Svara, I'm glad that you reviewed it too because he said, unfortunately, this doesn't work when navigating with the UI navigation controller instance, e.g. UI image picker controller or eKey event well in the modal presenter. Thanks for bringing this up and we should definitely handle it. This changes in this PR don't seem to be working for me. A tangential issue I ran into the current implementation doesn't allow for more than one modal. If we're on a modal screen and a new screen requires a modal presentation, it gets pushes, pushed instead of being presented modally. 
Here, I'll thumbs up all of this because this is a really good discussion. It's sad that not very many people are in here. Like, if we go to the hotwire, let me just show you an example. Two issues, six pull requests. But then if we go over to Turbo Rails, 94 issues, 40 pull requests. <laughs> like, issues aren't good, but they also are good because they're just discussion. You know, like people are asking questions, they're talking, people are doing pull requests. Also look at the stars, like 2K stars. Turbo iOS has only 800 stars. So it's just kind of sad. Although obviously that these numbers are, oh, 180K people are using Turbo Rails slash Hotwire. That's amazing. But then here, we can't even tell how many people are using this because, well, probably just the way that it's set up, I guess, with GitHub. But that's all I'm saying is that even if we look at forks, Turbo Rails has 300 forks. Turbo iOS has 85. I just feel like more people should be conversing in here, but I'm definitely someone who's going to spend a lot of time helping out the Turbo iOS framework, experimenting and trying things out. URL, say var phone number equals just this string. Now we should be able to use this all around. So if we came down to this one for the contact number, so the number is just the index. And if we do another interpolation, just put phone number, it'll show the phone number and I'll put a dash to separate it. Then also here, when we're adding to the URL, why don't we put the phone number instead of the index? And then if we replace or not replace, but we just redo the app, we can test that out. intercept with native view now when we click on a contact number but oh, we get an error oh that was unexpected it doesn't like my numbers with my whole number thing apparently i'm actually confused why it didn't like my number oh is it because of this look how we have this other thing that's checking patterns numbers zero through nine i mean we're gonna have to use a different regex can we just do like no numbers but just plus <laughs> Plus should mean everything, right? Might have to go look into the path configuration more and see like the documentation for that. Load, let's see if this works. Intercept with the native view. We click, nope, still an error. All right, I'm gonna look at the path configuration docs. So go back to the GitHub, go to docs, and then path configuration. And let's just try to read through this real quick. Well, not the whole thing. I'm just gonna try to find out what I need to know, like the patterns. I need to learn more about the patterns. Path properties. Patterns, which is an array of regular expressions for matching on the URL. Here's like the new. Sure the order of query string parameters doesn't affect matching a wild card. Mm, I'm still confused. It's just, I'm gonna try to use like a, oh, doesn't it have to be an array? So. It said there needs and to be an I array of regex expressions. Anything. So let's just do array and then wildcard. And I'm gonna click this again. Click on here. Ah, oh, we still get an error. Why are we getting errors? All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to look through the source code, try to figure out where they're handling path configuration. Look at this, a whole folder for path configuration. That should make it easy. Path rule, that sounds like something for regex. So let's look, really need to figure this out. So what am I doing wrong? Here's the match function. Returns true if any pattern in this rule matches path. Pattern and patterns, we're gonna do a regex for the pattern. Range, we're gonna get the path start index, dot dot path end. I don't even know, like, I can't even tell you that. Regex number of matches, ns regular expression. So let's, maybe the regular expressions for ns, which what is ns? Let's try to figure out more about this. So block iterator that allows clients to supply blocked, okay pattern like this just try like regex not working and that's regular expression with literal oh so you escape with double slash how it is what if we try to escape that one more time do a double slash and then run hey 
the modal works. Intercept with the native view. It works. Okay, so perfect. So I, I'm able to use my regex. I just need to... Wow. I've been here for like probably an hour recording just trying to figure that out and yeah i really wish it was right inside of here but let's try to add to the docs definitely gonna add to the docs actually the only problem is that i really should use the branch because now i want to add another contribution but my branch is my my main's gonna be more ahead get branch we can do a git log and we'll see that our last thing was adding this. So I need to remove that from the log. Let's get checkout of regex that configuration. I'm gonna do a dash B. Now let's do git log again. And we'll see we still have this commit. So I need to like remove it. So look up remove latest commit from branch. You're sitting on that commit then this command or i can just use it off the commit id so let's do that version so say get reset hard i'll take this shaw thing right up here oops copy we're gonna reset that that didn't really work get reset hard head is now at no, it's still not. Oh, is that like saying which commit we want to go to? So let's try to go to the one before. Instead of this one, we're going to go to uh, what? this one. <laughs> we skipped over this, guys, and we went to his. But let's go back to this one, I guess. There we go. We do a git log. Here we go. We're at like the most recent. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and update the doc. So do that. I'm just going to open it up in VS Code. Type in code dot. Now we're inside of the Turbo iOS framework. We're gonna go over to the docs, pass configuration, and then we'll go inside of here and we're gonna add some stuff about the regex. We have like sources, path properties, query string matching. All right, I guess we can add just another section like Swift regex. And then we're gonna explain it. We're just gonna say like the Turbo iOS framework uses might as well just shout out the thing that we use which is right here ns regular expression whoops we gotta go back to the code and let's do some back ticks so it gets highlighted class swift class to evaluate regex expressions which i guess regex p is already like that differs from the ruby regex we're gonna have to say that like something to note is you have to escape backslashes because slash is turbo ios framework this also looks weird the turbo ios framework uses ns regex expression swift class to evaluate regex expressions um, something to note is you need to escape backslashes because they are special characters in swift to do this add a second backslash and then we could show an example too so like right here with the json thing let's just copy that put it all the way at the bottom actually why don't i use my example xcode we'll take my example right here for the numbers controller put the patterns in <clears throat> and then let's say we want to do now our slash D, we actually need to do a double slash to escape double slash D. Also, do we even need, we don't need parentheses if we're not going to be checking for anything else. I mean, hey, this would be pretty helpful for me because I just spent like so much time trying to figure this out. This looks good to me. 
over here get status wait why do i see nothing different don't tell me i'm opening i'm looking at the wrong code because we do have two turbo iOS's. yeah i think i am dang it save. we need to open up the right repo because i have i accidentally downloaded two put my new content yeah and then see the only thing it adds is at the bottom swift regex yeah, that looks good to me. And that would have saved me a ton of time. So we're definitely going to contribute. Status. Let's check the diff on this. Make sure we didn't do anything we didn't want to. Whoa. Oh. Need to make sure this is actually copying. With regex at the end. Oh, no new line. <laughs> Let's add a new line. Everything looks good. We're going to add that file. I'm gonna get commit, explain Swift regex, and need to escape backslashes. Okay, there we go. So let's go back to Chrome, my Turbo iOS. So we have this explain regex and path. Actually, I want to do a pull request on, yep, just like this, onto the main. Explain Swift regex and the need to escape backslashes. But let's just say like this addition to the docs is to explain the need escaping backslashes. Path configuration file. Struggled with this for a while, not knowing why path configuration is failing. So this addition should make things a lot easier to understand for developers who are new to Swift. Boom, just like that. Now we have two pull requests. If we go to files changed, I just added this addition to the docs. Looks beautiful. Let's go look at all the pull requests. We have our first one that we did an hour ago. See, I, that's why I needed to do the addition because I don't want anybody else to have to dig in the source code and struggle just to figure out what's going on.